there's power in connection. It fuels innovation and moves education and research beyond the boundaries of geography. In 1996, a group of leaders dared to imagine connecting California's universities, its community colleges and grade schools, its libraries, and its cultural assets. If you'd have told me it was going to be what I see today, I'd say that's a little far out. But it was always our goal, and that old saying, we wanted to smash distance and we wanted to smash time. We wanted to break those barriers down in order to facilitate really effective research and educational collaboration. In the 1990s, Stuart Lynn was the Chief Information Officer for the University of California system in the office of the President. The National Science Foundation, NSF, funded T1 line connections to research universities and networks emerged to connect campus locations in California. Stuart Lynn said we need to bring all the institutions together, so he was the instigator of forming CINI, and he brought the representatives of Stanford, Caltech, the University of Southern California, CSU, and himself from the UC, and we met in San Diego and said, okay, let's try to go after some of this high-performance computing grants that NSF is going to award, and that's how CINI got its beginning. I think I was being something of a catalyst in bringing people together. I talked to the NSF and I asked how they'd feel about a group proposal. They were very encouraging. Money is a remarkable stimulus. We've got an initial grant of $3.85 million. It was $350,000 per institution. A very simple structure connected the northern and southern parts of the state. Two OC48 rings linked with an OC12 connection. About 1999, John Sylvester, who I think was the chair of the, the board at that point in time, said, we need to upgrade this network that we have for Scenic. The answer was dark fiber. With capacity available in the state, Scenic negotiated fiber contracts that remain in place today. The Scenic board was comprised of three members from the private sector institutions, one from Stanford, one from Caltech, one from USC, three from UC, and three from CSU, and we had one at large, Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson remains active with Scenic today as a driving force behind the evolution of the Pacific Wave. So Pacific Wave is a very, very important initiative. Increasingly, research is multidisciplinary, multi-institutional, and multinational. Take any important research concern, healthcare, environment, energy. These are not issues that are bounded um, by countries. The ability for a researcher to connect to a tool or a resource elsewhere in the world that's a valuable resource to them is, is of huge import. Back to the early 2000s, one of the most important connections was with California's K-12 schools, initiated by Cisco Equipment sales rep Laura Reynolds and Carol Stillman. I think she woke up one morning and said, we need to get the K-12 schools connected to the Scenic Network because these kids have to be technologically savvy. The board was initially concerned with um, non-higher ed institutions, uh, well, even including the community colleges but based in K-12 as well, that they'd somehow bring down the level of uh, discussion, the level of support for research universities. Uh, and I felt very strongly that that wasn't the case. The next thing I know is I get a call from the governor's assistant saying, how much money do you need to connect the K-12 schools to the Scenic Network. Getting state support turned out to be the easy part of adding K-12 to Scenic's network. We made it work, but it wasn't a short process. It probably was, you know, three years getting from here to there. What is so encouraging about Scenic and what attracted me and many others to Scenic in the first place was this esprit that's created between those who have been here since the internet began 
and young up and coming engineers and researchers and and administrators and, and educators, and they're all welcome. Scenic Today has further collapsed time and space with its Pacific research platform that links scientists across disciplines. Dealing with big data is probably the biggest challenge for archaeologists in the 21st century. And going out, collecting data with different digital tools makes us uh, create a need for sharing that data and the best way is over these very high-speed uh, networks. We're talking about basically network speeds 100 to 1,000, 10,000 times what you get at home over your cable modem or DSL. Right, we have thousands of years of innovation in science, engineering, and the arts and mathematics that we really need to capture and preserve for future generations. So we need to acquire it, we need to store it, we need to communicate it. And networks are truly the ultimate enabler to do this. If we want to broadcast these microscopic images anywhere outside of the USC campus, Scenic is our network gateway to the rest of the world. So essentially we can't get from here to there without Scenic. Beyond Science is the link between those who produce cultural content and new audiences. If you look across California at the scientific and cultural organizations that we have, it just has amazing riches. If we connect them via the network and some sort of rich sorts of tools, you extend the range of these organizations. We didn't want to be an island. We wanted to be part of something that was happening worldwide. We didn't want to be average. We wanted to be excellent. We wanted to be ahead of the curve. The challenge will always be moving a little bit more on the edge. I think more than many other states, our network and the services we provide need to respond to the expectation that California is going to be a leader in research and innovation. We plant some seeds, things like the Pacific Research Platform that we're doing in collaboration with the research universities. Our cyber infrastructure, our cybersecurity uh, initiative, which is really important. Um, making the big investment and going from uh, uh, a 10 gigabit network to a 100 gigabit network. But the most exciting thing about the future is what we don't know. <laughs>